Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger, his family, his companions, and those who follow them until the end of times. Welcome to lesson number 96 of Tafsirul Jalalain. Alhamdulillah, in our last lesson together, we were able to cover verses 179 to 188 of Surah Al-A'raf. So inshallah today, we're going to pick up right where we left off with verse number 189. Qala rahimahu Allahu ta'ala huwa ay Allahu alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida ay adama waj'ala khalaqa minha zawjaha hawwa'a ليسكن إليها ويألفها فلما تغشاها جامعها حملت حملا خفيفا هو النطفة فمرت به ذهبت وجاءت لخفتي فلما أثقلت بكبر الولد في بطنها وأشفق أن يكون بهيمة دعوا الله ربهما لئن آتيتنا ولدا صالحا سويا so here, in verse number 189, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost is highlighting the origin of all of mankind, of all of humanity, the creation of Adam alayhi salam, and then his wife, Hawa. And then afterwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing how some of his progeny, how some human beings later on fell into the sin and mistake of associating partners with Allah. Now Imam As-Suyuti rahimahullah, he explains these verses based off of a particular narration that is found in some collections of hadith, but the scholars of the hadith mention that this particular narration is weak, it is not accepted, and that it's perhaps from the Isra'iliyat, it is from the um, Judeo-Christian narratives and that's why the majority of Mufassirun do not accept this particular narration and they don't explain the verses um, according to how Imam as does. So we will see how Imam as explains it and then I will clarify uh, what the position of the majority of um, Mufassirun is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is he who created you all from a single soul. Then from it made its spouse, so he might he may find comfort in her. After he had been united with her. She carried a light burden that developed gradually. فَلَمَّا أَثْقَلَتْ When it grew heavy, دَعَوَ اللَّهَ رَبَّهُمَا They both prayed to Allah their Lord, لَإِنْ آتَيْتَنَا صَالِحَا If you grant us good offspring, لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ We will certainly be among those who are grateful. So here, we are being told again of the origin of all of mankind the creation of Adam alayhi salam, followed by the creation of his wife, Hawa. And after them, later on, when generations came, um, they fell into the sin uh, of associating partners with Allah. So here Imam as he says, huwa ay Allahu alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidatin ay Adama. He, meaning Allah, is the one who created all of you from a single soul, meaning Adam alayhi salam. وَجَعَلَ And he made, خَلَقَ He created, مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And from it, and from this single soul, he created its spouse, Hawa. So Allah created Adam alayhi salam and his wife, Hawa. Why? لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا So that he might find comfort in her. وَيَأْلَفَهَا Right, and live with her in ulfa, in harmony and togetherness. فَلَمَّا تَغَشَّاهَا And when one of them lies with his wife. 
So, فَلَمَّا تَغَشَّاهَا From here onwards, right, according to the majority of Mufassirun, this is referring to human beings. Those generations that came later on. Right, certain individuals and communities and people from the progeny of Adam alayhi salam. But here, Imam al-Suyuti is saying this is referring to Adam alayhi salam himself. That فَلَمَّا تَغَشَّاهَا جَامَعَهَا when Adam alayhi salam uh, lies with his wife, meaning jama'aha, he had relations with her. Hamilat hamlan khafifan. Right? She conceived a light burden. She carried a light burden. Huwa nutfa, meaning the, the male reproductive fluid, meaning she became pregnant. Famarrat bi. And that developed gradually. Or going about freely, meaning فمرت be that you know in the early stages of pregnancy, the um, the pregnancy is not that difficult, and a, a a woman and a mother is still able to move around and be mobile. So فمرت be, and she continued going about freely. ذهبت وجاءت, right? She would go and come لخفتهي because of the light lightness uh, of the burden. Meaning that you know the, 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 the pregnancy and the unborn child is not as burdensome early on in the pregnancy, and therefore the mother and the, the woman and the wife is still mobile and can move around and go and come and walk without much difficulty or discomfort. But then it grows heavy, right? When it grew heavy, meaning the um, child in the womb of the mother. Right, through the, the size of the child in her womb, right? And they feared because according to again this interpretation that Imam Suyuti is using, that this would be the first time ever now and the first incident ever of procreation of a child being born. They didn't really know what was going on. So they feared that perhaps it may be some sort of um, beast or some sort of animal. رُوِيَ أَنَّهُ أَتَاهَا إِبْلِيسَ عَلَى صُورَةِ رَجُلٍ It's narrated that Iblis came to Hawa in the form of a human being and said to her مَا يُدْرِيكِ مَا فِي بَطْنِكِ What do you know is inside of your womb? لَعَلَّهُ بَهِيمَ أَوْ كَلْبِ Perhaps in some sort of creature or a dog وَمَا يُدْرِيكِ مِنْ أَيْنَ تَخْرُجِ And you don't know where it's going to exit from فَخَافَ so he created this fear within them. ثُمَّ عَادَ إِلَيْهِمَا Then he returned to both of them and said, إِنِّي مِنَ اللَّهِ بِمَنْزِلَةً That I have uh, a status with God. I am close to God. فَإِنْ دَعَوْتَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَجْعَلَهُ خَلْقًا مِثْلَكَ Right, and if you, if you, um, يعني, إِنْ دَعَوْتُ If I ask Allah to make it a creation similar to yours, meaning a human being, a human child, then name it, Abdul Harith. And it is said that Al Harith was the name of Iblis. Right? Al Harith was the name of Iblis when he was in the assembly of the angels before he uh, expressed his arrogance and pride and refused to prostrate before Adam alayhi salam. Now, again, this is all based off of Isra'iliyat, and the majority of Mufassirun say this is, uh, you know, this is da'if, uh, it is weak, it is not reliable. And that is um, per, uh, not the best way to understand and explain these particular verses. But that is what Imam Suyuti rahimullah has chosen. So, وَأَشْفَقَ أَنْ يَكُونَ بَهِيمًا right, They both feared that perhaps this unborn child, this life that's growing inside of her womb, might be some sort of creature or animal. دَعَوَ اللَّهَ They both supplicated to Allah. Right, Their Lord, رَبَّهُمَا لَإِنْ آتَيْتَنَا وَلَدًا صَالِحًا If you give us a good child, if you give us righteous offspring, and he says صَالِحًا, according to this interpretation, سَوِيًا right, Meaning balanced, proportioned, right, not born with any sort of um, handicap or defects or disabilities, etc. لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Then we will certainly be among those who are grateful لَكَ عَلَيْهِ we will certainly be among those who are grateful to you for this blessing and for this gift. قَالَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ 
فلما آتاهما ولدا صالحا جعل له شركاء وفي قراءة بكسر الشين والتنوين أي شريكا فيما آتاهما بتسميته عبد الحارث ولا ينبغي أن يكون عبدا إلا لله وليس بإشراك في العبودية لعصمة آدم وروى سمرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لما ولدت حواء طاف بها إبليس وكان لا يعيش لها ولد فقال لها سميه عبد الحارث فإنه يعيش فسمته فعاش فكان ذلك من وحي الشيطان وأمره رواه الحاكم وقال صحيح والترمذي وقال حسن غريب فتعالى الله عما يشركون أي أهل مكة به من الأصلام والجملة مسببة عطف على خلقكم وما بينه اعتراض So here uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he granted their dua He responded to their supplication and gave them a healthy, fully proportioned and shaped and fashioned child فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمَا صَالِحًا And when he granted them good offspring جَعَلَا لَهُ شُرَكَاءَ فِيمَا آتَاهُمَا They associated false gods in what he has given them. When he gives them a good child, they ascribe some of what he has granted them to others. فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ Exalted is Allah above what they associate with him. So these translations are, are, are translating according to the uh, interpretation and understanding of the majority of Mufassirun. That this is referring to later uh, children and generations of human beings. That when they were expecting, they feared that the child may be born uh, handicapped or with some sort of uh, defect or with some sort of issues and problems. Maybe it may be missing a limb or perhaps it might be a miscarriage or perhaps the child will be born with some sort of disability whether physical or mental so they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah our Lord if you give us a healthy child right if you give us a healthy child free from any disabilities then we will be among those that are grateful and then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them that child they become ungrateful and they associate partners with Allah and perhaps they say that, you know what, we received this healthy child because of um, some other false deity or false god or whatever it may be. So that is what the, the interpretation of the verses is. But here, Imam Suyuti is saying that this is referring to Adam and Hawa. So it says, فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمَا وَلَدًا صَالِحًا That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them a healthy child, جَعَلَا لَهُ شُرَكَاءً right. They made a partner for him. So shuraka is the plural of sharik. But here he clarifies وَفِي قِرَاءَةٍ بِكَسْرِ شِينِ وَالتَّنْوِينَ In another qira'a, in another recitation, instead of shuraka, it's recited جَعَلَا لَهُ شِرْكًا A sharikan. And they made a partner for him. فِيمَا آتَاهُمَا in what he had given both of them. How did they do so? بِتَسْمِيَتِهِ عَبْدَ الْحَارِثِ By naming that child عَبْدُ Harith. So again, Adam and his wife Hawa, according to this da'if, this week uh, narration, that Imam Suyuti is building his explanation upon, that when his wife was expecting, they feared uh, the unknown, and they didn't know what was going to be born. And what uh, Hawa was going to give birth to. So Shaitan came and messed with them and said that, you know what, um, if you name your child Abdul Hadith, then the child will be um, healthy and free from any disabilities. And, you know, he gave them all these false promises, etc. So by doing so, right, they, they, they made a Sharik for Allah, right, by naming their child Abdul Hadith. And again, Al Hadith is mentioned as the name of Iblis when he was still in the assembly of angels. وَلَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدًا إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And it is not befitting for anyone to be a servant, to be an abd, 
except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَيْسَ بِإِشْرَاكٍ فِي الْعُبُودِيَّةِ لِعِصْمَةِ آدَمٍ And then Imam Suyuti clarifies that نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ We're not saying that Adam and Hawa committed shirk because all prophets and messengers, they are ma'asum. Um, they are divinely protected from committing any sins. So he's not saying that he did shirk in ubudiyya, in worshipping. Right? There's, this is not shirk in types of worship. And then he mentions the narration, or at least one narration that he's building this explanation off of. And this is why interpreting um, these verses according to this particular narration is problematic. Because you come up with all of these problems of interpreting the word shuraka and ja'ala lahu shuraka'a and attributing that to Adam alayhi salam and things like that. And that is why the overwhelming majority of mufassirun say that no, that when it says falamma taghashaha onwards, it's referring to human beings. It's referring to the children of Adam alayhi salam that came later on, you know, generations later, who fell into the sin and who fell into uh, corrupt beliefs and practices of associating partners with Allah. All right, so here he says, well, he mentions one of the narrations that وَرَوَى سَمُرَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمُ who said that when Hawa gave birth طَافَ بِهَا Iblis right, Iblis came to her وَكَانَ لَا يَعِيشُ لَهَا وَلَدٌ and before that time none of her children would live that either she would have a miscarriage or they would be born and they would pass away immediately or infancy whatever فَقَالَ he said سَمِّيهِ عَبْدَ الْحَارِثِ Name their child Abdul Harith, فَإِنَّهُ يَعِيش. And I'll guarantee you that your child will then live. فَسَمَّتُهُ So she named him Abdul Harith, فَعَاشْ And the child lived. فَكَانَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ وَحْيَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَأَمْرِهِ So that is from the wahi, yani the inspiration, the whisperings of shaitan and his command. رَوَاهُ الْحَاكِمُ And this is narrated by Al-Hakim. And he says, صَحِيحٌ وَالتِّرْمِذِي وَقَالَ حَسَنٌ غَرِيبٌ but again, the overwhelming majority of hadith scholars say that this riwayah and the other riwayahs that mention this being related to Adam and his wife are da'if, are munkar, they are from the Isra'iliyat that are not accepted, that are rejected and not acted upon because it contradicts the principles of the Sharia in our system of belief. فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ So exalted is Allah Above what they associated with him, meaning the people of Mecca, min al asnam, meaning uh, Allah is exalted above what the people of Mecca associate with him in terms of idols. Wal jumlatu musababatun. Wal jumlatu musababatun. Yani the this jumla is the ka is the effect is the consequence. Atfun ala khalaqakum. And it's ma'atuf upon huwa alladhi khalaqakum. And what came in between now is i'tiran. It's like a parenthetical statement. So wal jumla meaning the statement of Allah fata'ala Allahu amma yushrikun musababatun. And the actual meaning is huwa alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. God alone is the one who created all of you from a single soul. Fata'ala Allahu amma yushrikun. So Exalted is Allah above what they associate with Him. Alright, so again, the, the way that these verses are understood by the majority of Mufassirun, just for, again for the sake of clarity, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off verse number 189, talking about the origin of mankind. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created all of us from a single soul, Adam alayhi salam. And from that single soul, he created his wife, Hawa. لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا So that he can find peace and tranquility and comfort in her. And then afterwards, right? Afterwards, when human beings um, uh, started expanding and spreading across the earth, and their beliefs and practices became corrupt, that when one of them would conceive and they would be expecting a child, they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them a healthy child that is free from any sort of uh, disabilities, whether mental or physical. And they would say that, Oh Allah, if you grant us this gift and this blessing, 
then we will be among those that are grateful. But then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them what they ask for, they show their ingratitude by associating partners with Him. فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ Right? Allah is exalted above anything that they associate with Him. And that's why Allah then poses this rhetorical question. أَيُشْرِكُونَ مَا لَا يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ Do they associate with Allah those which cannot create anything but are in fact created themselves? Right? How can they set up with Him these partners that create nothing and are themselves created? So قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ أَيُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ مَا لَا يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ وَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ لَهُمْ أَيْ لِعَابِدِيهِمْ نَصْرًا وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ بِمَنْعِهَا مِمَّنْ أَرَادَ بِهِمْ سُوءًا مِنْ كَسْرٍ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ وَالْإِسْتِفْهَامُ لِلتَّوْبِيخِ وَإِنْ تَدْعُوهُمْ أَيْ الْأَصْنَامَ إِلَى الْهُدَى لَا يَتَّبِعُوكُمْ بِالتَّشْدِيدِ وَالتَّخْفِيفِ سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْكُمْ أَدْعَوْتُمُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ أَمْ أَنْتُمْ صَامِتُونَ أَنْ دُعَائِهِمْ لَا يَتَّبِعُوهُ لِعَدْمِ سَمَاعِهِمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ عِبَادٌ مَمْلُوكَةٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ فَادْعُوهُمْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكُمْ دُعَاءَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فِي أَنَّهَا آلِهَةٌ ثُمَّ بَيَّنَ غَايَةَ عَجْزِهِمْ وَفَضْلَ عَابِدِيهِمْ عَلَيْهِمْ فَقَالَ أَلَهُمْ أَرْجُلٌ يَمْشُونَ بِهَا أَمْ بَلْ أَلَهُمْ أَيْدٍ جَمْعُ يَدٍ يَبْطِشُونَ بِهَا أَمْ بَلْ أَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا أَمْ بَلْ أَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا إِسْتِفْهَامُ إِنْكَارٍ أي ليس لهم شيء من ذلك مما هو لكم فكيف تعبدونهم وأنتم أتم حالا منهم So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is totally destroying the concept of shirk that associating partners with Allah makes no sense whatsoever that attributing a partner to God and worshipping someone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether it's some sort of person, an idol, a statue, an ideology, philosophy, whatever it may be, makes no sense whatsoever. So he poses this direct question, right? أَيُشْرِكُونَ مَا لَا يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ Do they associate partners with Allah? Right? Do they associate with Allah those idols which don't create anything? لَا يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا Right? They're not creators, they are not khaliq. So how can they be? Worshipped. وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ And on top of that, they are created themselves. So Imam Suyuti says, أَيُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ right? Do they associate with Allah, right? those idols, فِي الْعِبَادَةِ in worship, مَا لَا يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا Those idols and those things that don't create anything. Not even don't create, that can't create anything. وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ Why they themselves are created. وَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ لَهُمْ نَصْرًا وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ Which cannot help them or even help themselves. So, لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ لَهُمْ أَيْ لِعَابِدِيهِمْ نَصْرًا They are unable to help them, meaning those who worship them. These idols, these statues, they cannot help the people that are worshipping them. وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ And they can't even help themselves. بِمَنْعِهَا right? By protecting themselves. مِمَّنْ أَرَادَ بِهِمْ سُوءًا By protecting themselves against those that intend evil for them. مِنْ كَسْرٍ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ In terms of breaking or something else. These idols, these inanimate objects made out of stones and rocks and wood and dates or whatever. They can't even protect themselves and help themselves by protecting themselves against you know those that intend evil for them by breaking them or doing something else to them. Well, istifhamu tawbikh And this question, it's a rhetorical question, as tawbikh, as a reprimand, as a scold. Like, how in the world could you do this? How in the world could you associate partners with Allah? Things that can't create, yet they themselves are created. Things that can't help you and can't even help themselves. وَإِن تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى لَا يَتَّبِعُوكُمْ And if you call upon them for guidance, 
they cannot respond to you. Or another translation, if you call such people to guidance, they do not follow you. سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْكُمْ أَدَعَوْتُمُوهُمْ أَمْ أَنْتُمْ صَامِتُونَ It makes no difference whether you call them or remain silent. It is all the same whether you call them or remain silent. وَإِن تَدْعُوهُمْ أَيْ الْأَصْنَامَ Right? If you call upon them, meaning the idols, إِلَى الْهُدَى Towards guidance. لا يتبعوكم They cannot respond to you. He says يتبعوكم بالتشديد والتخفيف It can be recited in two ways. بالتشديد from the verb اتبع يتبع or بالتخفيف يعني لا يتبعوكم right from تبع يتبع سواء عليكم أدعوت أدعوتموهم إليه أم أنتم صامتون أن دعائهم right سواء عليكم it is all the same. It makes no difference. أَدَعَوْتُمُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ That if you call them towards guidance, or if you call upon them for guidance, أَمْ أَنْتُمْ صَامِتُونَ Or if you remain silent, and دُعَائِهِمْ From asking them and supplicating them. لَا يَتَّبِعُوهُ لِعَدَمِ سَمَاعِهِمْ right. لَا يَتَّبِعُوهُ They will not respond to you. They will not answer your dua. لِعَدَمِ سَمَاعِهِمْ because they cannot hear. They haven't heard your call. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ عِبَادٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ فَادْعُوهُمْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Those you invoke besides Allah are created beings like yourselves, similar to yourselves. So call upon them and see if they will answer you if you are truthful. So he says, Imam Suyuti rahimahullah inna alladhina tad'una right those you call upon besides Allah yani ta'buduna right these idols or those idols that you call upon besides Allah meaning you worship besides Allah ibadun mamlukatun amthalukum are created beings mamlukatun owned just like you Right. They are created things and they are mamluka, they are owned just like you. فَدْعُوهُمْ So go ahead and call upon them. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكُمْ And see if they will answer you. And let them respond to you. دُعَاءَكُمْ Meaning to your calling and supplication. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are truthful, فِي أَنَّهَا آلِهَةٌ If you are truthful in the fact, if you are truthful in your claim that they are gods and deities, and deserving of worship. Right. ثُمَّ بَيَّنَ غَايَةَ عَجْزِهِمْ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies the extent of their inability. That these statues and idols have no ability, powers whatsoever. وَفَضْلَ عَابِدِهِمْ عَلَيْهِمْ And the virtue of those that worship them over them. That these, you know, people that are committing shirk, they have... Uh, they, they are better than these idols. فَقَالْ أَلَهُمْ أَرْجُلُ يَمْشُونَ بِهَا Do they have feet to walk with? أَمْ لَهُمْ أَيْدِي يَبْطِشُونَ بِهَا Or hands to hold with? أَمْ لَهُمْ أَعْيُنُ يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا Or eyes to see with? أَمْ لَهُمْ آذَانُ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Or ears to hear with? قُلْ دُعُوا شُرَكَاءَكُمْ Say, call upon your partners and conspire against me without any delay. Right? Scheme against me and don't spare me. So here, Imam Suyuti says that Alahum Arjulu Yamshuna Biha. Right? Allah asks these rhetorical questions. Alahum Arjulun. Do they have feet? Yamshuna biha to walk with. Am bal or rather alahum aidin jamu yadin. Do they have hands? Yabiltishuna biha. Right? To hold with. Bal alahum ayunu yubsiruna biha. Or do they have eyes to see with? 
بَلْ أَلَهُمْ آذَانُ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Or do they have ears to hear with? Right? And he says all of this is تِفْحَامُ إِنْكَارٍ These are rhetorical questions and the purpose of this rhetorical question is إِنْكَار right? To reject, rebuke, reprimand, scold A eh? لَيْسَ لَهُمْ شَيْءٌ مِنْ ذَلِكْ مِمَّا هُوَ لَكُمْ They don't have anything that you have. You have feet that you can walk with. You have hands with which you can grasp with. You have eyes that you can see with. You have ears that you can hear with. These idols that you're worshipping don't even have that. فَكَيْفَ تَعْبُدُونَهُمْ So how in the world can you worship them? وَأَنْتُمْ أَتَمُّ حَالًا مِنْهُمْ While you are more complete in terms of your creation and condition than them. So how in the world can you worship them? أَمْ قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ قُلْ لَهُمْ يَا مُحَمَّدُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَيْهِ سَلَمْ أُدْعُوا شُرَكَاءَكُمْ إِلَى هَلَاكِ ثُمَّ كِيدُونِ فَلَا تُنْظِرُونَ تُمْهِلُونَ فَإِنِّي لَا أُبَالِي بِكُمْ إِنَّ وَلِيِّيَ اللَّهُ يَتَوَلَّى أُمُورِ أَلَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْكِتَابَ الْقُرْآنَ وَهُوَ يَتَوَلَّى الصَّالِحِينَ بِحِفْظِهِ وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِهِ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ نَصْرَكُمْ وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ فَكَيْفَ أُبَالِي بِهِمْ وَإِنْ تَدْعُوهُمْ أي الأصنام إلى الهدى لا يسمعوا وتراهم يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الأصنام ينظرون إليك أي يقابلونك كالناظر وهم لا يبصرون So here at the end of verse number 195 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he says قُلْ Say, ud'u shuraka'akum. Call upon your false deities. Call upon your false gods. Those whom you associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thumma kiduni. Then conspire against me. Scheme against me. Fala tunvirun. And don't spare me. Don't delay. So here, Imam al Suyuti rahimullah, he says, Qul lahum ya Muhammad. Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ud'u shuraka'akum ila halaki. Call upon your false deities. Call upon your false gods to destroy me. Thumma kiduni. Then go ahead and plan and plot and scheme. Fala tunzirun. And don't spare me. And don't spare me a tumhiluni. Right? Don't grant me any delay. Right? Don't uh, spare me whatsoever. Fa inni la ubali bikum. Because I don't care about you. I don't mind what you do. I have no care and concern because your false deities, your false gods do not have the power and ability to do anything. And indeed, my protector, my guardian is Allah who revealed the book and He alone protects the righteous. Go ahead and call upon your gods, your false deities, right? Go ahead and plot and plan and scheme because my protector is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he guards and protects the righteous. And your false gods and deities are powerless. They are useless. So, inna waliyi Allah. Truly, my guardian, my protector is Allah. Yatawalla umuri. He takes care of my affairs. الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْكِتَابَ الْقُرْآنِ The one who revealed the book وَهُوَ يَتَوَلَّ الصَّالِحِينَ بِحِفْظِهِ And he alone is the one who guards and protects the righteous with his protection. وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ نَصْرَكُمْ وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ And those you call besides him can neither help you nor even themselves. وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ And those whom you call upon besides Him, meaning besides Allah, لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ نَصْرَكُمْ are unable to help you وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ and they can't even help themselves. فَكَيْفَ أُبَالِي بِهِمْ So how can I mind them? How can I care about them? When they're powerless, they can't even help you, they can't even help themselves. وَإِن تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى لَا يَسْمَعُوا وَتَرَاهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ وَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ 
And if you call them to guidance, they can't hear. And you may see them facing towards you, but they can't see. So, وَإِن تَدْعُوهُمْ أَيْ الْأَصْنَامَ إِلَى الْهُدَى If you call them, meaning the idols, towards guidance, لا يسمعوا They can't hear. These are inanimate objects made of stone and rocks and other materials. They cannot hear. وَتَرَاهُمْ يَا مُحَمَّدُ صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الأصنام ينظرون إليك. And you see them, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, meaning the idols, looking at you, أي يُقَابِلُونَكَ كَالنَّاظِرِ Right, they're facing towards you like someone that's looking at you. وَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ But they can't see. Again, because they're inanimate objects. These inanimate objects, these statues, these idols are totally useless and powerless. They can't see, they can't hear, they can't speak, they can't cause any benefit, they cannot prevent any harm. So why in the world do you worship these things? Why in the world do you associate partners with Allah? أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّ وَلِيَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْكِتَابَ وَهُوَ يَتَوَلَّ الصَّالِحِينَ وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِهِ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ نَصْرَكُمْ وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنْصُرُونَ وَإِنْ تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى لَا يَسْمَعُوا وَتَرَاهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ وَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ خذ العفو وأمر بالعرف وأعرض عن الجاهلين وإما ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ فاستعذ بالله إنه سميع عليم إن الذين اتقوا إذا مسهم طائف من الشيطان تذكروا فإذا هم مبصرون وإخوانهم يمدونهم في الغي ثم لا يقصرون وإذا لم تأتهم بآية قالوا لو لجت بيتها قل إنما أتبع ما يوحى إلي من ربي هذا بصائر من ربكم وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ إن الذين عند ربك لا يستكبرون عن عبادته ويسبحونه وله يسجدون قال رحمه الله خذ العفو اليسر من أخلاق الناس ولا تبحث عنها وأمر بالعرف المعروف وأعرض عن الجاهلين فلا تقابلهم بسفههم وإما فيه إدغام لولئ إن الشرطية في ماء المزيدة ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ أي إن يصرفك عما أمرت به صارف فاستعذ بالله جواب الشرط وجواب الأمر محذوف أي يدفعه عنك إنه سميع للقول عليم بالفعل In this next verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's reminding him about makarimul akhlaq. He's reminding him about having the most excellent and best character. Khudil afwa. Be gracious. Be tolerant. Be forgiving. Be pardoning. Be lenient. What murbil urf. And command, enjoin what is right. Wa a'rid anil jahideen. And turn away from the ignorant. Turn away from the foolish. So here Imam As-Suyuti rahimahullah he says Khudil Afwa Be tolerant, be gracious, be pardoning, be forgiving, be lenient, easy going Al Yusra min akhlaq nas Right, take uh, what is lenient and easy going from the character of people Wala tabhath anha Right, and don't seek after people's character Just overlook, forgive, be pardoning Wa'mur bil'urf and command 
with what is good, with what is right. And he says the word al-urf here means al-ma'roof. Right? Al-ma'roof is the opposite of al-munkar. Al-ma'roof is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares to be permissible, good, wholesome, pure, and lawful. Everything that is within the realm of permissibility according to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So command and enjoin what is good. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And ignore the foolish and ignorant. فَلَا تُقَابِلْهُمْ بِسَفَهِهِمْ So don't respond to their uh, saf. Don't respond to their ignorance and foolishness. This is a very beautiful verse. Um, Ibn Jarir and Ibn, uh, Ibn Abi Hatim, they narrate mursalan, meaning they bring a chain of narration that goes back to the Prophet wasallam. But the companion narrator is missing. It says, لَمَّا نَزَلَتْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ That when this particular verse was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ said, What is this, O Jibreel? Meaning, what does this mean? قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَكَ أَن تَعْفُوَ عَمَّنْ ظَلَمَكَ That truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to forgive and pardon the one who has wronged you. وَتُعْطِيَ مَنْ حَرَمَكَ And to give to the one who has not given to you. وَتَصِلَ مَنْ قَطَعَكْ And to maintain a relationship and maintain ties with the one who has cut you off, with the one who has severed their relation with you. And Ja'far al-Sadiq rahimahullah says, لَيْسَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ آيَةٌ أَجْمَعَ لِمَكَارِمِ الْأَخْلَاقِ مِنْهَا That there's not a single verse in the Qur'an that is more comprehensive in terms of good character than this particular verse. So again, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ Have this attitude of being tolerant, gracious, forgiving, pardoning, lenient, easygoing. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ Command what's good. وَأَعْرِضَ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And ignore the foolish and ignorant. وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ And if Satan should prompt you to do something, Seek refuge with Allah, He is all hearing, all knowing. Now here he highlights the structure of this word, imma. He says, فيه إدغامونون إن الشرطية في ما المزيدة. So this word imma is made up of two separate words, in الشرطية, which makes the statement a conditional statement, and this ma which is extra. So the noon of the in has been assimilated into the mim, and it became instead of in ma. It became imma, and it just means when or if, right? So, yanzaghannaka min ash-shaytani nazghun. If Satan should prompt you to do something, right? If a if a whispering comes to you from Shaytan, a in yasrif ka amma umirta bihi sarif. If something diverts you and takes you away from what you have been commanded to do, fasta'ith billah. Then seek refuge with Allah. And he says, grammatically speaking, this is jawabu shart. This is the response of the conditional statement. If so, then such. Meaning, if Satan prompts you to do something, then seek refuge with Allah. Wajawabu al amri mahdufun. And then, if you seek refuge with Allah, what's going to happen? That's mahdhuf, that is omitted, but it's understood. Meaning, yadafa'u ank. Allah will repel it from you, Allah will uh, protect you from it. So if you seek refuge with Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you and protect you from that whisper of shaitan. إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ لِلْقَوْلِ Truly he is all hearing of statements. عَلِيمٌ بِالْفَعْلِ All knowing of actions. قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ أَصَابَهُمْ طَيْفٌ وَفِي قِرَاءَةٍ طَائِفٌ أَيْ شَيْءٌ أَلَمَّ بِهِمْ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا عِقَابَ اللَّهِ وَثَوَابَهُ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ الْحَقَّ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ فَيَرْجِعُونَ وَإِخْوَانُهُمْ أي إِخْوَانُ الشَّيَاطِينِ مِنَ الْكُفَارِ يَمُدُّونَهُمُ الشَّيَاطِينُ فِي الْغَيِّ ثُمَّ هُمْ لَا يُقْصِرُونَ يَكُفُّونَ عَنْهُ بِالتَّبَصُّرِ كَمَا تَبَصَّرَ الْمُتَّقُونَ وَإِذَا لَمْ تَأْتِهِمْ أي أَهْلَ مَكَّةَ بِآيَةٍ مِمَّا اقْتَرَحُوا قَالُوا لَوْلَا هَلَّجْتَ بَيْتَهَا مِنْ قِبَلِ نَفْسِكَ قُلْ لَهُمْ 
إنما أتبع ما يوحى إلي من ربي وليس لي أن آتي من عند نفسي بشيء هذا القرآن بصائر حجج من ربكم وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إن الذين اتقوا إذا مسهم طائف من الشيطان تذكروا فإذا هم مبصرون Indeed when Satan whispers to those mindful of Allah, they remember their Lord. Then they start to see things clearly. Those who are aware of Allah, think of Him. When Satan prompts them to do something, and immediately they can see straight. So, inna الَّذِينَ taqaw, Truly those who are mindful, conscious, and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of taqwa, إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ أَصَابَهُمْ طَيْفٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ If they are touched, meaning if they are afflicted by something harmful from Satan. So طَيْفٌ, he says, is one qira'ah. So Imam Suyuti is using a different qira'ah. وَفِي قِرَاءَةٍ In another recitation, طَائِفٌ And that is the recitation that we are more familiar with. A, what does that mean? شَيْءٌ أَلَمَّ بِهِمْ Something that causes them alam, something that causes them pain and harm, tadakkaru. They immediately remember iqab Allahi wa thawabahu. They remember Allah's punishment and His reward. Immediately their taqwa comes into play and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His punishment and His reward. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ So then they can see clearly. They can see straight al haqqa they can see the truth clearly min ghayrihi from other than it fayarji'un so they stop they return they turn back they don't engage um, in that harmful thing that satan is prompting them to do and that is the power of taqwa right that is the one of the many benefits and many fawaid of being a person of taqwa that when shaytan tries to whisper to us or tries to trick and deceive us, we immediately remember Allah. We remember Allah's punishment and His reward. And that keeps us on the straight path. And then we can see clearly. But the devils persistently plunge their human associates deeper into wickedness, sparing no effort. Or the followers of devils are led relentlessly into error by them, and then they cannot stop. So wa ikhwanuhum and their brothers. A ikhwanu shayatini min al kufar. The brothers, the associates, the companions of the devils amongst the non believers. Yamudunahum a shayatinu fil ghay. The devils plunge them deeper into wickedness, into ghay, into misguidance and error. Right? The devils continue to lead them into ghay, into misguidance, into error, into wickedness. ثُمَّ هُمْ لَا يُقْسِرُونَ And then they don't stop. يَكُفُونَ عَنْهُ right? They don't stop plunging and going into disobedience and sin and wickedness and error and misguidance. بِالتَّبَصُّرُ right? By being able to see كَمَا تَبَصَّرَ الْمُتَّقُونَ As the people of taqwa can see. وَإِذَا لَمْ تَأْتِهِمْ بِآيَةٍ قَالُوا لَوْ لَجْتَبَيْتَهَا When you don't bring them a fresh revelation, when you don't bring them a sign, they say, but can you not just ask for one? قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَتَّبِعُ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ مِنْ رَبِّي Say, I merely repeat what is revealed to me from my Lord. هَذَا بَصَائِرُ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ This revelation brings you insights from your Lord and guidance and mercy for those who believe. Another translation reads, If you, O Prophet, don't bring them a sign which they have demanded, they ask, Why don't you make it yourself? Say, I only follow what is revealed to me from my Lord. This Qur'an is an insight from your Lord, a guide and a mercy for those who believe. وَإِذَا لَمْ تَأْتِهِمْ أَيْ أَهْلَ مَكَّ بِآيَةٍ And if... You don't produce a sign. If you don't bring forth and produce a sign for the people of Mecca, مِمَّ From what they have demanded and suggested. 
yani part of the objection of the people of Mecca would be that they would give these challenges to the Prophet Sallallahu that if you're telling the truth and if you are really a prophet and messenger then why don't you produce a miracle bring us something like the staff of Musa or you know cure the leper and the blind like Isa alayhi salam right iqtarahu they would make these suggestions of miracles that bring forth these miracles if you're telling the truth qalu and when you don't, they say, right? Why doesn't he not? Or why don't you make it yourself? Right? You know, why don't you produce this miracle yourself? Respond to them. I only follow what has been revealed to me from my Lord. And I don't have the authority to bring something from myself. Whatever I'm bringing to you in terms of revelation, whatever miracles have been shown to you, are coming to me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذا Quran, And then Allah highlights the greatest miracle that was given to the Prophet sallallahu As a matter of fact, the greatest miracle given to any Prophet. هذا Quran, This Quran, this revelation, بصائر is insights. حججن Proofs, irrefutable proofs from your Lord. Wahuda, a guidance, wa rahma and a mercy, for those who believe. Right, for those who believe. Qala rahimahullah, wa ida kuri al Quranu fastami ulahu wa ansitu anil kalami la alla kum turhamun. Nazalat fi tarkil kalami fil khutbati, wa ubira anha bil Qurani lishtimali ha ali. وقيل في قراءة القرآن مطلقا واذكر ربك في نفسك أي سرا تضرعا تذللا وخيفة خوفا من وفوق السر دون الجهل من القول أي قصدا بينهما بالغدو والآصال أوائل النهار وأواخره ولا تكن من الغافلين عن ذكر الله إن الذين عند ربك أي الملائكة لا يستكبرون يتكبرون عن عبادته ويسبحونه ينزهونه عما لا يليق به وله يسجدون أي يخصونه بالخضوع والعبادة فكونوا مثلهم Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Qur'an is recited Listen attentively to it and be silent so you may be shown mercy. So you may be given mercy. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ When the Qur'an is recited. فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ Listen to it attentively, carefully. وَأَنْصِتُوا And remain silent عَنِ الْكَلَامِ Remain silent from speaking. Don't speak. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ so that perhaps you will be given mercy. Then Imam Suyuti says, نَزَلَتْ فِي تَرْكِ الْكَلَامِ فِي الْخُطْبَةِ That this verse was revealed regarding not speaking during the khutbah. That the meaning of this verse is that when the khutbah is uh, going on, when the khatib is delivering his sermon, don't talk. Rather listen to it attentively. وَعُبِّرَ عَنْهَا بِالْقُرْآنِ And the khutbah has been uh, called Al-Qur'an yani the expression that's used for the khutbah here is the Qur'an لِشْتِمَانِهَا عَلَيْهَا عَلَيْهِ because the khutbah includes a portion of the Qur'an or at least a few verses of the Qur'an that's one opinion وَقِيل فِي قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ مُطْلَقًا that no this verse was revealed regarding remaining silent when the Qur'an is being recited period and others particularly Hanafi say that this verse is referring to when the Imam is reciting in prayer. When the Imam is reciting Quran in prayer, وَإِذَا قُرِيَ الْقُرْآنِ يَعْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ Then listen to it carefully and attentively. وَأَنْصِتُوا Don't speak. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that perhaps you may be given mercy. وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْلِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَال وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Remember your Lord inwardly with humility and reverence and in a moderate tone of voice, both morning 
and evening. And don't be among the heedless. And don't be among the heedless. So this is also being addressed to the Prophet and by extension to every single believer. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكْ أَيْسِرًا Remember your Lord fi nafsik in yourself, inwardly, a sirran, privately, or silently. Right, both meanings can be understood. Remember your Lord inwardly, in yourself, sirran, right, privately or silently. Tadarruan tadalluna with humility. Right, with humility, tadarruan, tadallulan, right, with humility. وَخِيفَةً خَوْفًا مِنْ And khifa with awe, reverence, and fear. وَفَوْقَ السِّرِّ دُونَ الْجَهْرِ And also, remember your Lord. فَوْقَ السِّرْ right, Meaning, louder than being silent. دُونَ الْجَهْرِ But not being fully loud. مِنَ الْقَوْلِ أَيْ قَصْدًا بَيْنَهُمَا In between being loud and totally silent. Meaning in a moderate, balanced voice, in a moderate tone of voice, right? Without raising your voice. Bil wal asal, in the mornings and the evenings. He says gudu, right, is the plural of the word ghadwa, and that is from the breaking of dawn, the rising of dawn until sunrise, and asal um, refers to the time from asal until maghrib. And these are two very special times or times full of blessings. So remember your Lord, engage in dhikrullah during the mornings and the evenings. From the time of Fajr until sunrise and from the time of Asr until Maghrib. He says, Awa'ilin nahar wa awakhirihi. The beginning of the day and the end of the day. Wala takum min al ghafirin. And don't be among the heedless from the remembrance of Allah. Inna al ladina inda rabbik. لا يستكبرون عن عبادته ويسبحونه وله يسجدون. Surely those nearest to your Lord are not too proud to worship Him. They glorify Him and bow down before Him. So إن الذين عند ربك truly those nearest to your Lord or truly those who are in the presence of your Lord. أي الملائكة the angels لا يستكبرون يتكبرون عن عبادته are not too proud to worship him right ويسبحونه and they glorify him they declare his perfection ينزهونه they declare him to be free عما يليق به of what is not befitting for him وله يسجدون and they do sajda to him. They bow down before him. They prostrate. A, يَخُصُّونَهُ بِالْخُدُوعِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ Right, they, they, they specify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility and worship. And either only show humility and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكُونُوا مِثْلَهُمْ So be like them. Don't be arrogant. Don't be proud. Bow yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and declare His perfection and glory. And that brings us to the end of Suratul A'raf. So inshallah, tomorrow we will start with Suratul Anfal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this effort of ours and place it on our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a means of increasing our understanding of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq, the ability to act upon the Qur'an and to build our lives upon Qur'anic principles. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا وَمَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلِّمْ جَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ